Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how you can install the Unify controller on a Synology NAS. Now this option is going to allow you to self-host the Unify controller on your Synology NAS using Docker. You're still able to access it outside of your network if you set that piece up and we'll take a look at that a little later. But a lot of Unify devices in specific switches and access points don't come with the Unify OS installed. If you're using something like a Unify Dream Machine or you purchased a cloud key, this is not necessary. However, if you're using Unify switches and access points, for example, and you don't buy a cloud key, you're gonna have to self-host it in order to get to all the management features. So that's what we're gonna take a look at today. And before we get started, I just wanna say that I have full written instructions for all of this in the description of the video. So the first thing that you have to do is ensure that you have the Docker package installed on your Synology NAS. And as soon as that's done, you're gonna to have to go into File Station and inside of that Docker folder, you're gonna create a new folder named Unify Controller. So we're gonna map this at a later time and this is where all of our configuration files are gonna be stored. So if for whatever reason at a later time you wanna go and port this to a different device, if you wanna run it on a Raspberry Pi or a different server that's currently running Docker, you're gonna take all of these files at that time, move them over to that device, and if you mount that folder, all of your configuration will stay intact. So if you wanna back up your configuration, this is the folder that you're gonna to have to back up. Once you create that folder, you're gonna to have to open up Docker, you're gonna select the registry, search for Unify, and then you're gonna see the Jacob Alberti Unify image. You can double click that and download the latest image. Now this is probably the most popular Unify image that you can use. There are a few different ones, but this is probably the easiest one to use. This is the one I've been using for a long time, and I think that this is the one that most people are using. So the image is gonna take a little while to download. It's fairly large. But once it's done, you can double click that and that will create a new container. At that point, you can give your container a name and then you can select advanced settings. You're gonna enable auto restart and this will just ensure that if the container ever stops for whatever reason or if you reboot your Synology NAS, it will automatically start back up. Once that's done, you can select volume and you're gonna to have to add a folder and then you're gonna select that Unify Controller folder that we created earlier and then you're gonna mount it to the path forward slash unify. So like I said earlier, it's gonna take all of your configuration files and it's gonna store it inside of that unify controller folder. And in summary, it's just mapping that forward slash unify containers folder directly to a folder that you can access. That's the easiest way to describe it. So once that's done, you can head over to the network section and then you can select use the same network as Docker host. Finally, head over to the environment section and we're gonna to have to change a few things here. So you're gonna add a new environment variable named TZ and you're gonna set the value to be your current time zone. Now you're gonna to have to scroll down and there are two permissions that we're gonna change from true to false. The first is bind priv and the second is run as underscore UID zero. So bind priv is just if you want to bind to lower port values, we're not doing anything like that so we're setting that to false. And the second is if you wanna run as root. And since we don't wanna run as root, you can set that to false as well. Once that's done, you can apply all of these settings and then the container will be created. Now at this point, you have to be patient. This took at least five minutes for me to fully create the container. Certain Docker containers will create very quickly, meaning you can access them just about immediately. This one, however, for me, took some time. So you wanna make sure that you're patient because you might think that it's not working when in reality, you just have to wait a little longer. So while we're waiting for that, if you're using Synology's firewall, and I suggest that you do, um, if you aren't sure how to configure it, I'll leave a pop-up now for a video I created on that, but you have to go in and you have to create a few firewall rules to ensure that you can access the application. So in specific, those are the TCP ports 6789, 8080, 8443, 8843, and 8880. Now those are TCP. You're also gonna to have to create a second UDP rule for ports 10001 and 3478. That will ensure that you're able to access the container and you're not gonna run into any issues. So once that's done, you should be able to access the IP address of your Synology NAS using port 8443 and the HTTPS protocol. Now, if you receive a 404 error at this point, you have to wait a little bit longer. 
This is where I was saying earlier that if you don't wait long enough, you might think that something's wrong when it's not. So if you receive that error, just wait a little bit longer. You can pause the video and you should be able to access it within the next few minutes. So when you can access it, the first thing that you're gonna do is give your controller a name and then you can accept the terms of service and you can select next. If you're restoring from a backup, you would also do that now. But I'm assuming that the majority of people probably aren't, so we're gonna go through the full setup here. So the next step is going to ask you to sign in with a Ubiquity account. You can do this if you want, and that's gonna allow you to access the Unify controller using Unify's website or their mobile application. Or you can skip that and you can switch to the advanced setup, uncheck the enable remote access option, and also uncheck use your Ubiquity account for local access, and then you can go in and create a local account. So this will mean that everything at that point will be stored locally on your Synology NAS, and none of it will be communicating with Ubiquity servers. The next step will ask you if you'd like to enable auto backup, and if you'd like your network to be automatically optimized. This is totally dependent on whatever you'd like to select. So a lot of people like to optimize their network themselves, and if you do, you should probably keep that unchecked, but if you want it automatically optimized, you can leave that enabled. Just keep in mind that you might get better results if you take the time to watch a few videos. I don't have any, but there are a ton of great ones out there that will show you how to optimize some of the access points to function a little bit better than they do by default. So the next step is gonna see the devices that are waiting to be configured. So all of my devices are already adopted on my Unify controller that I'm currently using on my Synology NAS. Um, so I don't have anything to show you here, but when you launch this for the first time, you're gonna see all of your networking equipment here, and you should be able to select all of them and proceed, and at that point, it will associate it with this Unify controller. Now, the next step is going to ask you if you want to set up a Wi-Fi network. So if you're using an access point or you have one of their routers and access points like the Dream Machine, you can come in here and you can set up those Wi-Fi settings here. Now, once that's done, you can move on to the next step, confirm all of your settings and select finish. And at that point, the Unify controller will be fully set up and configured. However, your job doesn't stop there. So depending on the networking gear you have and what you'd like to set up, you can go in at this point and you can create a guest network. You can create different VLANs. You can set up just about whatever you want to at this point. So that's the power of having a managed switch and access points that you can go in and configure. You can set it up exactly as you want. You can route traffic how you want. You can limit traffic, et cetera. There's tons of different things you can do. I will have videos coming out in the future on PFSense and Unify equipment um, and how you can utilize them together, et cetera. I've been focusing a lot on that and I am excited to share with you guys some of the things I've been doing. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. Thanks guys.